hello everyone you are welcome to today's class so in this class we want to look at practice questions on probability and uh, we have just few questions to look at in this uh, video so let's look at it the first one which probability scale describe this statement and the statement is a pregnant woman will have a boy so when a woman is pregnant, there's probably that the woman will give birth to a baby boy or a baby girl. So which means the chance of having a boy and a girl is 50-50. So in that case, it's going to be even. That is 1 over 2. So the answer here will be what? Even. Right? So that is that. So we we'll move to question number 2. Now, question 2 says, which probability scale describe this statement again? Today is Monday. So tomorrow will be what? Sunday. If you look at it very well, if today is Monday, yesterday should be Sunday. Tomorrow should be what? Tuesday. But this is telling us that to, tomorrow will be Sunday. Is that correct? So is that possible or impossible? Is that certain or uncertain? So this is probability of this one. The scale here will be what? Impossible. It's impossible. For us, for today to be Monday and tomorrow to be Sunday. So that is impossible. Tomorrow will be Tuesday. So in that case, the scale here will be what? Impossible. Hope that is clear. So move to the next question. All right, the third one. Which probability scale describe this statement again? You will cause an accident if you drink alcohol and drive. Now. We have to be very careful with this. You will cause an accident if you drink alcohol and drive. So not all drivers that drink alcohol uh, cause accidents on the road, right? So which means the chance of someone who is driving and has drank alcohol is very high. So we will say, we will not say it is certain. Uh, we will not say it is certain. It will what? It is going to be likely. So the likelihood that such a driver will cause an accident is very high. It's likely. It's more than half. So that is why it's going to be what? Likely here. What is, it tends towards being certain. But we are not very sure that it's going to be what? It's going to cause an accident. So we will we are going to give it on uh, likely it can't be unlikely it's going to be what likely so therefore the answer here is what likely i hope this is clear so the next one all right the fourth question a card is selected at random from a pack of 52 cards what is the probability of getting a queen of a diamond a queen of a diamond so as we have explained in a video here that you've watched so we have if we have standard packs of cards there are 52 and there are four suites on the cards which are diamond we have the uh, hearts a uh, spade and the uh, club so diamond and uh, hearts are red white uh, spade and club are black then we also have uh, each of these suits as one one each of the following from number two to ten that is nine then we then have his we have queen we have king and we have jack they are one one each of these diamond hearts um spade and the club so queen of diamond is one card queen of diamond is what one card so that is one one out of what 52 i hope that is clear so that means the answer will be this one out of 52 so if you are still finding difficult go to that video check it out where i talked about cards check it out again try to picture the diagram the table i give there put it in your head 
and you'll be able to use it to answer so many questions. I hope that is clear. So let's move to the next question. All right. Each of the numbers 0 to 10 to 11 is written on a piece of paper and then put in a box. What is the probability of picking at random a number from 3 to 10 inclusive? Now, now let's look at how many digits do we have, how many numbers we have. That's 1. 1 to 10 is 10 plus 0, that is uh, 11 plus 11, that is, we have 12 numbers. So we have 12 numbers. Now we are picking at random. This is, we are not giving any preference to any of the words of the papers. So we are being we are not selective. Now we are we are not selective. We just pick any word that are answered touches. So in that case, so we now have what's the probability of picking from three to ten? Inclusive here means that three and the ten are included. So we now need to count the number from 3 to what? To 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That is 9. 9. Out of how many numbers? 12. Out of 12. Oh, this is not right. You know, out of 12. Then we can then reduce this to... Is lowest than three can go here. That is three. Three in twelve. That is four. That is four. Excuse me. Sorry, it should be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eleven is not part of it. So that is eight over twelve. So four can go four in eight. That is two. Then four in twelve. That is what three. That should be 2 over 3, which is this number here. That's 2 over 3. Is that clear? So the next question now. Question number 6. A bar contains 2 white balls, 12 black balls, and 6 green balls. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is to check the total number of balls in that bag. That is 2 plus 12. That is 14. 14 plus 6, that is 20. So we have 20 in all. So if a ball is picked at random, what's probability that it is white or green? So here, we need to calculate the probability of white or green. That's what we're looking for. Probability of white or green. Probability of white or green. So white, we have all in probability is what? Plus. That'd be 2 out of 20 plus green, 6 green, 6 out of what? 20. So when you have the, that would be 8 over what? 20. 8 over 20. So which can be reduced to its lowest term here. So 4 can go, that is 2. And a 2 in, 4 in 20, that is 5. So we have 2 over 5. That's 2 out of 5. That's the answer. I believe this is clear. So let's move to the next question. Now, question 7. The probability of passing an examination is 0 0.77. So the question should be, what is the probability of not passing the exam? What is the probability of not passing the exam? So that is the question. So in this case, that means probability of not passing the exam will be 0, 1, minus. So probability of an event happening, uh, uh, probability of an event not happening is equal to 1 minus probability of an event happening because probability of an event happening and probability of an event not happening is 1. You know, because the probability scale is from 0 to 1. So we can't get a value above 1. So in that case, 1 minus what? 0 0.77. And by the time you subtract it, you have 0 0.23, which is this one. I hope this is clear. All right. All right, number eight. A fair die is thrown once. A fair die is thrown once. Find probability of getting a multiple of three. In a die, we have number one to six. One to six. 
now which of these are multiples of three three is a multiple of three and six is a multiple of three so that means we have two numbers that are multiples of three out of how many numbers six numbers that is one out of four, three so which is this option here i hope this is clear all right all right what is the probability of picking a letter a from the word pythagoras letter a from the word pythagoras so if you look at this word how many letters do we have in all so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten we have ten letters so how many a's do we have there we have two a's that be two out of ten equals to what one out of five one out of five which is uh, this option here so let's look at the next question question number 10 eight out of 20 students in the class wear glasses what's the probability that the student selected at random does not wear a glasses so within out of eight, eight 20 students in the class eight of them wear glasses so which means 12 of them will not wear glasses. that's what it means so that means going to be 12 probability will be 12 out of what 20. so when you reduce the lowest term four can go that's three out of five so three out of five which is this last option here so the next one question number 11. a fair dice is thrown 720 times find the number of times you would expect to get a prime number so this is uh, expectation so the first thing it dies when you throw it once what is the probability what's the uh frequency relative frequency of throwing it once and that is what one find the number of times you will expect to get a prime number so we have one two three four five six so let's pick the prime numbers we have here. two is a prime number here three is a prime number five is a prime number so when you throw it on what's the probability of getting a prime number will be three out of what six which is one over two right now <coughs> excuse me one over two now this that is now thrown 720 times so how many times are we going to get a prime number so we just multiply it by what 700 and what 720 excuse me 720 so two here one two here that is three carry one that is six that is 360 times a uh, prime number what you have here will appear that is that clear so move to the next one now a dice same thing is thrown 1000 times the score three appears 168 times what is the relative frequency of scoring a three? Now, from what we have there, so is that the relative frequency of three, let it be x, multiplied by the number of times, the number of trial, which is 1000. That will give us the expectation, which is what, 168. So what we're looking for is x. Well, let's divide both sides by 1,000. 1,000. So this cancels this. So which means relative frequency of scoring 3, a 3 is 160 over what? 1,000. So let's now reduce the lowest term. It's um, 2 here. That is 8. That gives 84. And this gives what? 500. So in 84, we have two can go as well. That is 42. Let me write it here. 42 out of 250. Two can still go. Two can still go. <coughs> two here. That is 21. 21 out of 125. Uh, three can go in 21, but three cannot go in 125. In that case, this is the answer. So the relative frequency of uh, 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 Three appearing three scoring three 
a 3 is or 21 out of what 125 so let me repeat it again so relative frequency expectation of an event as you have done expectation of an event expectation of an event expectation of an event is relative frequency of that event multiplied by the number of trials the number of trials so check the the videos that under it you see the expectation of event is relative frequency multiplied by what number of trial now here we've given the expectation the relative frequency the expectation which is 168 right so relative frequency is what we are looking for make it x multiply by number of trial which is what 1000 so when you divide both sides by 1000 you have 168 over 1000 then you reduce it to lowest term so that's all i just did now so let's move to the next question now <clears throat> <clears throat> number the next question number 15 two coins are tossed simultaneously find the probability of getting at least one tail probability of getting at least one tail so what we're going to do let's have the total possible outcome here with the sample space so we have let's have the table this table we have the first one add tail then this one add Add and the tail here. So this we add, add, add tail, tail, add, then tail, tail. So one, two, three, four. We have four possible outcome. Find the probability of getting at least one tail, which means we can have the minimum tail we can have is what one, or we can have two and more. So this is one tail one tail then two tails that'll be what three out of what four that's the answer so on to the next question suppose you roll a standard six-sided die and flip a coin what's probability of rolling an even number on the die and getting it on the coin so the first thing is let's have uh the, the scale the sample space first which is very important without is you might have problem getting it so let's have it so we have on the dice we have one two three four five six right and on the coin we have head and the tail so here will be add one. This is add two, and this is add three, add four, add five, add six. Right. So this one tail one tail two tail three tail four tail five tail six now the question is what's probability of rolling an even number so let's look for even number and getting it even and it this is one this is two this is three even an add that be three on the coin so even an add that is a uh, two four six and the total the total possible outcome is 12 so that'll be three out of 12 which is one out of four that's the answer is that clear so move to the next one now question the question 17 now 
you have a spinner divided into eight equal sections numbered one through eight if you spin the spinner twice so what is the probability of getting a prime number on the first spin and an even number on the second spin? so another method of doing it without drawing the sample space diagram so when you draw the sample space diagram we're going to have that will give us uh eight times eight that will be that gives us 64 right so the first thing will be prime numbers let's list out the prime numbers we have there so prime number there is two we have two three is a prime number five is a prime number and seven is prime number the second spin even number so the even number there is two uh, we have four six and eight now what's probability of the first one even second one so it's going to be two 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 four uh two six two eight two eight we pick the other one three two three four three six Three eight, the fifty one, the five that'll be five two, five four, five six, and then what? Five eight, the seven, seven two, seven four, seven six, and seven eight. If you look at everything together, that gives sixteen. Sixteen out of uh 64. so 16 can go here uh can go in the, the that is one and a 16 here that is four that should be one over four so that means there is no answer in this question one over four is the answer one over four is the answer i hope this is clear all right move to the next question all right <coughs> question 18 two dice question 18 two dice are rolled simultaneously what's the probability of getting a sum of seven or eleven so if you look at the one i drew the other time so seven appears six times so that will give us six out of what, 36 or that is plus 11 appears two times that is two over what 36 that means we have eight over 36 and when we reduce to lowest term we're going to have four here to four here is what nine that gives two over nine which is this option so we the now if fair coin is tossed twice what's the probability of getting s on both tosses so in that case we have ed ed that's what it means so if you have your this you have this we have head tail head tail this is the first one this is the second one so this is head head right then head tail tail head tail tail so this is one out of what four so taking this to uh decimal will be 0 0.25 so that is this option here so the last question so what's private question 20 is the last question you roll a fair six-sided die and toss a fair coin what's probability of rolling a four on a die and getting tail on the coins on the on the coin toss so in that case we can only have four and a die and uh, a tail once that is one out of 12 so that is the answer which is the last one here so this is what we're going to stop in this video if you are new to this channel uh don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notification bell so anytime i release video like this you'll be able to have access to it and benefit from it and if you find this video useful and helpful don't forget to give us a thumb up if you have, if you have any question uh just write in the comment section i'll surely respond to your comment then if you want to uh, join our program whereby we have 
our video classes after the video classes then we have questions for you to solve and uh, uh, practice then you see your results instantly that will show that okay you are getting the concepts right or not so kindly write in the comment section then we'll get across to you thank you so much meet in our next video bye for now